as of recently, the AEW has been kind of under fire. There's been a lot of smoke with AEW because week to week, the ratings have been going down since CM Punk's departure. You had that CM Punk debacle with Hangman Adam Page, yeah. Tony Khan being there. CM right. Punk uh, basically had a pipe bomb uh, in the post-game in interview, the post-wrestling, yep. post-match press conference. And people were kind of like, where's AEW going to go through go, go from here? I do agree with their decision to let go of CM Punk because it kind of felt like he was a cancer to the locker room. And AEW was built off the back of wrestlers that were trying to make their name in the industry versus wrestlers coming from WWE that have already been established in the industry. But now it kind of feels like there's more buzz than ever because of the MJF storyline of him winning the championship. And yeah, I thought it, that was great. It's a really, there's a really interesting dynamic happening with WWE. And I think um, I, was, I was watching a Cody Rhodes interview, I think a lot earlier this year where he was talking about the shift from the, from the company's birth, where, like you said, it was mostly wrestlers who had not come from WWE who were growing and wanted to continue to grow and build their own thing with few stars coming from WWE to help establish it right you had john moxley at the very first show you had chris jericho signing on before the brand was even producing content technically like there were some names that were coming from wwe but the majority of it was a, a kenny omega the young bucks uh scu mjf who was a a local independent wrestler at the time he had he had done stuff nationally but he was mostly known in the northeast alone it shifted a lot right you have bodies like Brian Danielson and and Miro and Claudio Castagnoli, so many, so many very, very talented Andrade and Swerve and Keith Lee is, are more of them. So many incredibly talented wrestlers, superstars that came from WWE and moved to AEW. There's a very interesting dynamic shift that that attention starts going to more valued names. You get CM Punk. People wanted CM Punk to come back for almost a decade, right? Seven years without an established wrestling match and appearance, right? I don't like to be armchair booker and I don't like to uh, watch wrestling as a wrestler, right? I try to keep the two separated and just enjoy it as a fan. But because I know how a lot of backstage dynamics can be, you can't not watch it from that lens, you know, being who I am now. Um, with the whole Punk, Bucks, Omega, Hangman thing, the blow up right after the press conference. I I wasn't there. So I as much as I would love to have the insight and like touch on it more specifically, I don't like to speak for people and I don't like to put myself in rooms I wasn't in. Uh however, Punk is still technically under contract, even though he has not appeared for them. The Bucks and Kenny just came back on Sunday for full gear. I'm not of the belief of the conspiracy that it was all planned. That was all what we call a work in wrestling. I don't believe that. I believe that beef is beef. And whether you're in football or wrestling or baseball or any other sport, beef is beef. But Punk is still on the roster. The Bucks and Kenny are back on TV. There's no reason why if everybody wants to do business and can put personal stuff aside that an amazing story can be told. You add in the element that MJF is now the world champion of AEW. He is really their number one homegrown guy to go from a quote unquote unknown to a star for AEW. It kind of writes itself. It does. If, if everybody's willing to play ball. And I, as a yeah. fan, as a fan, not a wrestler taking myself out of that, shoes out of those shoes i want to see it i want to see the kenny punk match i want to see the bucks and, and punk and mjf all intertwine and interact is it going to happen i don't know but the we'll way see. you're speaking right now is making me happy as a wrestling fan because i can just imagine a story that can be told from this mjf homegrown talent cm punk somebody who came from wwe and is trying to take over aw you can say quote unquote and MJF has been throwing shots. He's been throwing oh, shots. Oh, nonstop. And, yeah. The He's quoting his old promos, yeah. calling himself the devil, talking about uh, people coming to my company, da 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 Yes. It's all there. All of the pieces are there if everybody will play ball. So will what they? you're telling me is that essentially you don't believe that 
it was all a work. So you believe there's legitimate beef between CM Punk, Hangman, Hangman Page, the Young Bucks, and uh, Kenny Omega. Sure. But you also believe that uh, maybe I'm, I'm, you know, interpreting this wrong, but you're also telling me that CM Punk and Tony Khan, Tony Khan specifically know, knows what's best for business. And if they could put all their things aside, then a CM Punk return is likely to AEW. And they can make a, they can make like, a uh, great story like out of some this. Some of the best wrestling stories have come out of true events, right? Mm-hmm. Your Matt Hardy and your Lita and your Edge love triangle. Uh, the Montreal screw job. There are insanely uh, popular and, and historic wrestling storylines that come out of real life events. This could be another one. I'm not yeah. saying it's going to be. I'm saying... All of the pieces are out on the table. And if Tony Khan, CM Punk, The Bucks, Hangman, MJF, Kenny, if everybody wants to play ball, it's all there. And I as a feel like fan, I'm just fully intrigued and yes. I want to see what's happening. I am too. I feel like wrestling is at its best when you can't differentiate reality from what's scripted. And I remember when the CM Punk blow up first happened and every single reporter was like, listen, this is not a work. There's like legitimate beef. There might be a contract buyout, all this other stuff. Yep. But now thinking back on it now, when you let things marinate for a while, it does feel like this is the best decision for them to do business-wise. Just and let it sit. Don't yes. do anything. Nobody make a move. And let's see how long people keep talking yeah. about it. And I do think that wrestlers have, you know, they kind of know that things can get personal, especially with the promos, because you have to mix in reality with your promos. Of course. Because so the, the fans, you can't just take it too have personal. only gotten smarter. Wrestling mm-hmm. fans have only gotten smarter and we have so much wrestling fans have so much more access to wrestler personal lives and, you know, the dirt sheets and reports and things like that. Wrestling fans are not dumb. You're not going to fool them with something dumb. Typically things have to be elaborate or muddy in order to buy in. When I, when I look at AEW, they sold out the United Center on a rumor. I think at the United Center that CM Punk might show up. And they built all this hype, but they never mentioned CM Punk. And that's just what it is. If you build that excitement in a muddy, sort of not super clear or telegraph scenario, that's when the people buy in. 